Today I'm going to have another microwave to repair with me and um, the reason I put this one is because it actually has a slightly different problem from the other one which seems to be pretty common on these units. Basically what happens is the rotary encoder then gives the time it's faulty and basically what happens is when you put the time it can show all sorts of different di of strange things. What's happening is the contacts inside this encoder are dirty and they need a cleanup. It's really easy to fix. So I thought I was going to do a video about this. The other thing other than this is that it doesn't work. So what I'm going to do is going to put some water on it. I'm going to check the temperatures. So environment temperature 13 degrees. 15 degrees for the water, okay. Everything is powered up and we're gonna hit start. Okay, the other thing you're gonna see is what's the power consumption of this. So we have 224 volts. And we have 2.7 amps, power factor 22. 150 watts. So basically what this means is that the transformer is being powered up but we have a problem on the secondary. So how do I know this? Simply by the fact that we have a very poor power factor. I don't know if you can see it, it's roughly 22. What this means is that there is an inductive load being powered up and the only inductive load we have in there is the transformer. Now, be very careful when fixing any of these microwaves because this thing can actually kill you. An open secondary can output something in the region of 6 kilovolts or, or thereabouts. Um, you don't want to measure that. As I mentioned on another video, never try to measure the secondary of a microwave transformer because these things can actually kill you. Well, anyway, we had enough of this. Uh, let's stop it. And as we can see, the water is still at the same temperature. Okay, first things first, you're going to switch off the appliance from the mains. Appliance is now switched off. And since we know that the transformer is powered, because our power meter has told us that we have consumption, is an inductive load, and so on, we know that we have a problem on the secondary. So the secondary of the transformer is actually pretty simple. You have this diode in here, you have this capacitor in here. Let me do a close shot. And what this does is basically rectifies to DC, but it actually doubles the voltage. <clears throat> so not only does it rectify, it actually takes the 2000 volts AC from the transformer, it stores them on the capacitor, the capacitor is charged to 2000 volts and on the next cycle it's going to add up the, the, the output of the transformer to the 2000 volts stored on the, on the, on the capacitor. So the result is going to be roughly 4000 volts. And the reason they do this is because this operates as a constant current source because the magnetron operates roughly at 4 kilovolts. So what happens is once this capacitor is discharged the capacitor, the, the, the transformer is only going to provide roughly 2000 volts. So that's not enough to operate the magnetron. As such, in a pretty similar way as any battery charger, if the voltage from your charger is lower than the voltage from your battery, then no, therefore no current is going to flow. So the total output is going to be given by this capacitor right over here. Um, which depends on the frequency of the mains and on the, on the, um, on the capacity of the transformer. This can actually be useful, for example, if you have a limited supply, you can actually replace that capacitor over there with one of half the capacity, and your microwave will effectively draw half of the power. But anyway, let's get enough of that. First thing we're gonna do is we need to short circuit the secondary capacitor, just to be on the safe side. And the reason I normally do that is I put my amp meter in the amp setting, which basically has a shunt across it. <coughs> and we're gonna short circuit the capacitor. Okay. 
These things have built-in resistors to, to discharge after the mains is powered off. Uh, however, do not trust and they are operating because if they're not, and if there's 2000 volts on the, on the capacitor, then obviously it's not going to be good for you, is it? Okay. So I'm not touching both terminals. I'm pretty sure this is discharged. There's no spark or anything. I can put my hands in there. <clears throat> Normally the problem with this is the fuse. This thing right here is a high voltage fuse. Do not try and replace this with an ordinary fuse. And what happened here probably is if you notice earlier, there's no plate on the microwave in here. So probably the microwave radiation just got uh, on the bottom of the unit and reflecting back and forth and it probably overloaded the magnetron. <coughs> and as such it burned the output fuse. So let's take this out. This just pops in for the record. It's a bit better now. And there you go. First things first, when you when you're fixing or working on this on the on the microwave transformer, always have a look, see if there are no there are no evident burn marks or anything that could indicate a flashover. These things are dangerous, these things can kill you. And therefore if you see anything black that indicates that may, there may be an arc or something like that, same thing in here. In these wires for the high voltage discard this transformer or discard the appliance because it's a real hazard <clears throat> next thing we're going to do is we can actually open this fuse and we can have a look to see if it is good or not now to open this thing you can see these hubs right in here so you have to pull them apart and then you have to open the whole thing they vary but um, it's generally not too hard to to open these things unless you're holding your phone that is okay there we have it some fuses like this one are glass some fuses of the more cheaper units are just um, a spring in here uh, if you have a spring type and not the glass type, try to replace it with a glass type because it may be dangerous because while it arcs, it might actually ignite the, the plastic and it might create a fire hazard. Anyway, we can see this one is blown. And be careful because this is not your ordinary fuse, household fuse. These fuses have a kind of a spring inside. And what they do is, since they deal with high voltage, once the filament breaks on the middle, the spring is going to push it, push the, um, the contacts away. And that's what's going to interrupt uh, the electric arc. This is needed, otherwise it might create a fire. Uh, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to bypass the the fuse. Be very careful because this is an extremely dangerous operation. I should be using another fuse in here rather than bypassing it. With that said, let's go and try it. Normally it's just the case of the magnetron being overloaded and therefore burning the fuse. It might be other issues as well, so be extremely careful when you do this. He didn't complain too much, so let's put a little bit more time. Well, if I can really. Well, anything really. If you go and look at the power meter in here, we can see 1300 watts, 91% power factor, which seems about right for what a microwave should be consuming. It doesn't appear to have any sort of problem. 
this point it should be fairly confident to say I can open it. And yes, the water is at 28 degrees, 29, so it clearly is working. So there you have it. This is a common type of problems uh, for the microwave, the high voltage fuse. Always be very, very careful when you work on the high voltage section. Do not try to touch this if you don't have any electronics knowledge or you don't feel confident. Call someone than it is. Next thing we're going to do is, I bypass this, I don't recommend bypassing it, the fuse only costs £5, so you might as well just get the fuse and if it blows up again, then you know you have a problem elsewhere. To short circuit again, a meter on the amp setting, attach both terminals, once it is discharged, you should be happy to put your fingers in there, don't do that. And you know then you have to replace this fuse. Next thing you're going to look at is how to actually fix the encoder. It's relatively straightforward, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this panel out and we go from there. So now I've taken the control board from his housing. This is the encoder which is faulty has this knob in it to take it off you just have to pull it off be careful because it might be a bit stiff and we don't want the contacts to come off the PCB now normally I would replace this thing is I'm a bit too lazy I don't have one I don't bother being looking on eBay for one or file now so for the time being I'm just gonna open this thing To open, they all vary the way they are open, but uh, basically you have these tabs on the sides and you have to very carefully not to snap them. You have to try to pull them out. Once they are all out, very gently pull the, the top of the encoder out so we don't have parts flying around. And very gently and you take it out. Okay, all we have there is just this contact which is gonna touch in here. If you do a close up to here, you can see there is a bit worn in there. That's the track. That's the reason why the contact is basically is bouncing, doing this rather than doing a, a contact. Is basically doing this. So what we need to do is we need to look at these bits in here, try to pull them off a little bit to make sure they make a bit more of pressure, so they won't bounce so easily. And we're also going to use some little bit of WD-40 just to clean this thing. And try to clean any rubbish which might be in here. You can also use an earbud to clean this. It might actually be easier. Once you've done your best to clean it, just a little bit more of WD-40. Wipe off the excess, don't clean it, just wipe it off. And reinsert the encoder housing.
Okay. Next we're gonna put this back on the housing just so that we get protected against any live wires. If you switch off any of these wires, make sure that you know where they are. Try to take a photo before you switch them off. Pull the encoder shaft inside. I'm not gonna put the screws inside just now. I'll do that later. And let's try. As you can see, it's working properly now. At least if we can see it. Okay. And there you have it, a quick and thick and easy fix for your microwave. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and come back later. Bye!